This is Performers Wanted. Welcome to the show, y'all. Today we're going to be talking to Emily Martinez, who you might recognize from The Wizard of Friendship off Broadway. Let's pop in and see how she's doing. Hey, Emily, how you doing? I'm good, Darius. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? I am doing very good. I am here with the wonderful and talented Emily Martinez. How are you doing? I'm I'm doing well. I'm excited to talk about process and theater and all of its ups and downs and um, just to chat with a lovely you today, Darius. So thank oh. you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. So uh, astute listeners may notice and recognize Emily from obviously the uh, off Broadway production of Wizard of Friendship by Lou Berger. But I know that there's more to that. There's more to the story. There's a reason why she got there. There's definitely <laughs> a reason why she got there. And we're going to get to, we're definitely going to get to Wizard eventually, but um, we're going to start with how you, you got there. So for folks who don't know who you are, uh, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit, Emily? Why are these always so hard, especially as actors? We talk about ourselves all the time. Um, <laughs> I am a multi-hyphenate creative um, that has been doing musical theater so much of my life, but I also do a lot of other artistic and creative endeavors. I did uh, YouTube for quite, uh, quite a few years, creating content for people mainly on um, – cruise ships. I did a lot because I worked uh, with Carnival Cruise Lines for about four years. Nice. And so I did a lot of content about cruise ship life and giving advice to people who were about to enter into that space. Um, because at the time, now there's a lot more, which is awesome. But at the time in like 2016, 2017, there weren't that many people talking about different lifestyles of different performers that weren't just Broadway based, um, or at least New York based. So um, I wanted to share the knowledge that I have out of that space of being a performer and want, went into it, the pitfalls, the highs, the lows, and all of the in-between. And uh, since quote unquote retiring from cruise ship life is what we call it, <laughs> um, I, I was making content on YouTube and online basically about like that transitional space of of changing one gigantic lifestyle which cruise ships is a huge lifestyle shift to anything uh on land life as we called it and um and so there was a big transitional time of getting my feet back on the ground uh in the new york scene trying to get people to know me um and then the pandemic hit and then everything else changed. Uh, so, yeah. So now I, I am, I am on a journey of just figuring out who I am as a creative now. Um, I still love performing and I love musical theater and I love just theater itself. Um, but I'm also opening myself up to um a slower life and a slower uh mentality towards the arts and trying to figure out my place in it and i think that's a really important mm -hmm. um thing for all artists to find because everybody's got their their own way of doing life and doing their creative endeavors awesome awesome so um just gonna ask this we're gonna take it all the way back we're gonna take it back yeah. like the theater bug like it catches us all at a certain point. Um, for me, I was very little. Um, when did it catch you? Like when was this like, okay, I like performing, but theater is the way I like to perform. I I can remember specifically. Um, it was when I was, the moment that I realized that I was like, ah, ah, this is different. Um I was always a I was always a little kid that I mean <laughs> I was diagnosed as ADHD in my 30s but so I always was like changing ideas when I was little and my mom's like oh my gosh she's just like has a big imagination meanwhile I was just like ADHD running around the house <laughs> um but I I started to really zero in and focus on musical theater after I saw Les Mis um it was when mm. it I don't I don't know what iteration it was. I think it must have been I don't know. I was I was young, so I don't think it was I think it was still like the main like the first production of it being in New York. Mm -hmm. Um but I remember sitting in my seat 
And <laughs> my sister was supposed to be with us, but she got sick that morning, so she couldn't come. So I had like my crush, <laughs> who like <laughs> was a family friend, was sitting there with us. And he was like not a musical theater boy. Like he liked NASCAR. <laughs> like it was just very bizarre. I love it so so much. he's sitting there watching this like intense, like I don't think he'd ever seen a musical before. And he's seeing like one of the most intense shows at the time, like mm-hmm. Lame yeah. Is. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like <gasps> mouth agape. And I think he's like, what is happening? <laughs> and my mom <laughs> is crying because my mom is like me. And mm-hmm. it was when, um, Eponine, I want to say, I don't even think it was like on my own, but I think it was just like when Eponine kind of came forward and just started to like show her character and show what she would do for love and what she would do for her, um, for Marius. And, and I, it was like the conviction of like that actress. And I just love how she was smaller and she like held the stage. And then, you know, from that point on in the show, at intermission, I turned to my mom and it was funny. The story is we were in the line to go to the bathroom and um, I turned to my mom and I went, this is, I want to do that. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And she turned to me and she was just like, okay, cool. Like thinking Emily's changed her ideas of what she wants to be when she grows up all the time. Mm -hmm. But I think there was something different in this. And I feel like from that moment forward, I just kind of, I focused a lot more. Um, Right. If anything, I became quite um, hyper fixed on on theater and <clears throat> musical theater predominantly. I mean, like I would play in my room as a little one. I would just I would put on like the soundtracks to like Hunchback of Notre Dame and mm. and Les Mis and all of it. Very <laughs> very uh, intense shows that are very like religious based, and that's like what is that unpacking? But um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would just pretend I was. I was the heroine of the show or sometimes I was like the lead male character. I was just like, I just wanted to, to escape and make believe and um, kind of like shift into another person's perspective and another person's like brain and, and play. And mm. um, so, yeah, I did that. I still do that. I still like pretend I'm in the shows. <laughs> <laughs> like in my room and all the time on walks that main character energy um but um yeah so it started then and after that is when i think i started doing um like i started doing more performance based stuff in school like in elementary school and i think i tried out for the play and started to experience the heartbreak that is musical theater from a very young age and mm. um and here we are. We, we're still on that journey. Wow. Well, first of all, what a first show to see. Like, lame is. <laughs> like, lame is like that is not a happy. <laughs> I, I know, right? I don't think it was my first show. I mean, I used to listen to, like, the original album. Um, and I would listen to, like, Castle on a Cloud, like, over and over and over again. Because mm-hmm. it was just so nice to, like, hear a little kid singing something that wasn't Annie. Um right. And but like I, I I I had the opportunity I had the privilege to see other shows because we lived pretty close to New York, um, in Pennsylvania. So I was I think I saw, I mean I also saw Phantom, which also like scary scary yeah. show for a kid. Wow. Um, I was like, oh, I'm gonna die. Like something's gonna fall <laughs> in my head. Um, but like I, I saw Susical when I was little, and that really gave me like a jolt. But it Lay Miz I think was the show that made me go, oh I this is what I wanted. That's my dream role. This is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, quite an intense show <laughs> to like make yes. that confirmation. <laughs> right. Right. I'm just like, yeah, but I mean, still it's such a performance based show that like, if you're like watching as a kid, you, I'm sure you're like wide eyed, like, and for different reasons. I mean, for, for me and anyone who like knows me knows this, but for me, it was like West side story. Cause I was like, I myself was a dancer and if, we, if you're little you know like a little boy then at the time it's gonna like oh dancing's for girls so I would like kind of like not really dance in front of people or anything like that but then I see them just like a group of guys killing it and I was just, just like athletic and like yeah. strong and and also like delicate and so, yeah the lame um not lame is uh <laughs> west side is a beautiful opportunity for men to see themselves in like 
in dance and stuff. It's such a great one. Right. So it was like, so that's it, you know? Um, so after, after seeing that show and after, you know, seeing other shows and realizing that you um, really enjoy this and want to be a part of it, what was the next step after that? Like, did you start doing like uh, junior theater, local theater? Did you start doing classes? Like, what did you do? Hmm. So I did, I know that in elementary school, there were a couple of, there were like a couple of shows. I think it was like, there weren't that many opportunities to do it. So um, I, I kind of just let my love for it grow at home. I'm the mm -hmm. youngest of five kids. So I right. think um, my mom, <laughs> I think she offered like the opportunity, like, do you want to take dance class? Do you want? And I think at the time I was like, no, I'm okay. Like, I, yeah, I don't I think I comp, I don't think I put it together as a little one to be like, oh, to do this, I need to learn these skills. Mm -hmm. It was just like, oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, oh no, I'm that, like, so, like check, like sign my name on the dotted line. Right. Um, but and also, like, I think my mom's like, if she's not asking to do it, I'm not going to force her to do it um, because I want her to do it because she loves it. And also, I'm tired. I have five kids. <laughs> like, understandable. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I didn't start taking dance until probably middle school. I started taking, like, a couple of dance classes um, and, like, did camps. I think I did, like, summer camps that had, like, some performance aspect to it. Great. And then it was – I, I want to say middle school is when I really started, like, figuring out I need to learn these, like, these are skills mm -hmm. I need to learn. So I know that I, I took like a, um, I took a, an acting class. I feel like it was kind of a scam now at this point in my life, thinking back to it, but <laughs> it was basically like this, this guy was <laughs> seriously like, what a story. I'm like getting these flashbacks. I did, I did it with a couple of friends and we were doing, I don't rem I think we played like a lot of acting games but then we were going to do a production of Midsummer Night's Dream mm -hmm. and the, and it never and it never happened. We we never had a performance of it, so that's why I think was that a scam? Like what happened? But um <laughs> I do remember learning some kinds of like techniques there and mm -hmm. um uh I think that's when my mom was just like, "Okay, like she really likes it, so we'll maybe we'll, you know, do things that aren't a scam now." And um <laughs> And and that one, I think it was just, I'm like thinking, I did a lot of singing in church and in choir and my mom was a singer. So like she would kind of give me tips here and there, but like in terms of building skills, it's kind of ironic. I didn't really start doing that until like, it was like, I would do new skills like every milestone. So in like high school is when I started taking voice lessons, um, and I kind of did voice lessons from then until like now, like I'll, I'll take them whenever I can. Mm -hmm. um, and I would do, I would do community, I did community theater in high school, uh, like during the summertime. And then I would just audition for the, the shows at, in my middle school and in my, um, my high school. And then I studied it in college. I went to Muhlenberg college for theater performance mm -hmm. and, yeah. So it was kind of like, it, it was a very, it was kind of a slow build of the skills that I would require, uh, would acquire. Mm -hmm. But that whole time I still, I feel like I did so much of my like prep and so much of my um, conditioning for what I love to do at home and on my own, a lot of it, um, which parts of me like really regrets like I wish I was mm -hmm. I w <laughs> there are times when I'm like I wish my mom was that theater mom that like put me into dance class or did mm -hmm. but at the same time like that was her method of being a parent and I didn't learn to hate anything that I was doing I always loved it so um mm -hmm. so yeah I I did different choirs and stuff like that um but then I also was doing like I did sports too so it was I think it was like a balance of um, different um, hobbies and different things that I enjoyed doing. But it wasn't until high school that um, I, 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 the school actually made me choose between doing theater and doing um, the sport I was doing was field hockey. So they like mm -hmm. made me choose, um, which sucked because it felt like nobody else had to choose. Right. Um, I think it was just timing of like the season and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, I, 
I think that's when it was like, okay, like I'm going to do theater. If I want to go on, I need to like get my skills up. And so I took dance classes at school. I was like on a, yeah, I took dance classes at school because they offered them. And then I did voice lessons and performed in any chance I got at school. And it was pretty competitive in my high school. It was <laughs> pretty, pretty traumatic in a lot of ways too, mm-hmm. but um definitely taught me what type of performer I did not want to be and what type of um, person in the theater industry I didn't want to be. And mm-hmm. so um, that helped me kind of find like where my kind of moral compass was in the theater world. Um, and which I still think I'm like holding on to today and being like, well, I want to be a better, <laughs> a better person, a kinder person than <laughs> what I was taught. So like, what do I have to do in order to do that and to grow in this space and, still kind of like step up to the plate in the ways that you have to sometimes to play the game. Um, Yeah, it's, it's complicated. I kind of haven't thought about like the journey of how I kind of got to, to here in a while. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting thinking about that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really relatable too. like thinking about like how like you're building these skills um, kind of organically. Um, Many people feel like, you know, people in the entertainment field, you know, like many of them have the 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 leg up because, you know, they are, are natural born with it. I started when like as soon as they could walk, they started doing it. As soon as they could talk, they started singing, you know, and um, a lot of times it comes up a little bit later and you just kind of like mm-hmm. build the skills a little bit like organically. And sometimes it just like helps when you start to learn, you're like being you're being molded into your type of performer, not the type of performer people feel you should be. Um, yeah. because you already kind of have a style you have an aesthetic already you know you have a flow that is just being molded as opposed to you know you just kind of being built from scratch as soon as you're able to uh just walk across the floor so that's it's yeah. still pretty relatable um in that and obviously you know this folks uh with that journey obviously like oh wish i started a little bit earlier but you know uh, you still are on the path that you are on and it still got you to uh, where you are today. So it is your yeah. own journey as well. You know? Yeah. It's kind of, it's you saying that just makes me think like, wow, I really have, I really have done it in the way that it had to be for me um, my whole life mm-hmm. because I find it's so easy now and Anytime I feel like I talk to anyone about theater, it's like it's that comparison game of 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 seeing like just where other people are at or or how they got there or, you know, when it feels like the only thing you see is people announcing like new job after new job after new job, which is, yes. you know, props to them, give you either your flowers. But at the same time, why not me um, <laughs> and why not all of us give us more jobs? Mm-hmm. But um, it's. It's hard. It's really hard not to compare your journey to someone else's um, that might have decided to go into like the machine of musical theater from a young age, whether it was their choice or not. Um, Because I do think there is like a type of machine uh, that generates a type of performer out there that usually those performers like kind of break free and realize like, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to do my own thing or I never Mm -hmm. want to perform again because it's like, I didn't have an identity of my own. Mm -hmm. And um, it it does make me think like, yeah, I have been able to do go, go at it at a path where I may not have always like enjoyed it. And I may not have always had anything (laughs) or a couple of things figured out, but it has helped me realize like, oh, this is who I am in the space and this is the type of person I want to be. And it is a it is like a privileged spot to come from to be able to say, oh, I'm I'm able to to maintain this person that I've grown into and not have to um just be what the quote unquote they want me to be. Mm-hmm. Which um Cause I tried that for so many years and it didn't get me anywhere. <laughs> like I yeah. tried after college to like wear the right dress and do the right audition song and the exact cut and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And it didn't, it truly, it didn't get me anywhere. I like 
no progress whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And um, and I was just like, "What? this is actual insanity. I'm doing the same thing over and over again with zero um, changes. And um, it's – even though the past couple of years for me personally have been very difficult um, in like personal life and just like life itself in – in the world, um, as everybody's experienced difficulties, I feel like I've actively chosen to be like, what is authentic to what I need and what I want? Because guess what? Like the theater world or the entertainment world is going to go on whether I'm here or not. Mm -hmm. And they're just generating, they're, they're generating product. They're not generating people. Um, the people are what make it. And, um, So I need to figure out like who I am and what I want because what is, what's the actual point if I'm doing it and I don't even know who I am or Mm -hmm. I'm doing it and I'm not living up to the things that I preach about being authentic when I can't even be authentic with myself when I look in the mirror. And like, so it, it's been some growing pains over the past couple of years and figuring out what's my purpose especially in this theatrical space like has my time come and passed have I done what I was meant to do or am I supposed to be in this like Broadway which I would love but am I meant to be in there am I meant to be in that space Mm -hmm. so um there's a lot of reflection that goes into being an an artist especially in the musical theater space that I don't think is taught to us at a young age of like, Hey, remember like, like Mufasa, like, remember who you are, <laughs> like it's, <laughs> you know, because we're just, we're so, we're so attuned to what other people are doing and what other people, who other people are when they might not even know who they are because right. we see this, I don't know perception of what we think they are but now i'm just i'm truly rambling so (laughs) So (laughs) sorry this is the the stuff that we we want it we want to hear you know um yeah because there's just so much that you know we don't see you know we we see the headshots you know Mm -hmm. we we see um the good news a lot of the good news the big announcements we you know which throw that out there throw that out there you know if you've got something good throw it out there and it's really the bad stuff really isn't anybody's business, but like, mm-hmm. you know, it's sometimes it's something that's good for people to hear this. And, you know, there's a lot of kiddos, a lot of people just starting, or even people who have moved to LA or moved to New York and are just like, I don't know if I can do this. I've been out here for a while. I've been trying, you know, and just, yeah, nothing's really hit. Um, but there's, you know, sometimes it's nice for folks who have had, any successes to just kind of say hey you know um it's rough but a lot of it you know pays off it's it's worth it um you know which is and also like the timeline of it too it's i feel like when people graduate school if they have a degree in theater or they they're done high school or kind of like any educational program where they've been doing the thing um and then they're like, okay, on to the real world. It's like, we just expect that it's going to happen so soon. If mm-hmm. it's going to happen at all, like that commercial success of name in lights, name in a playbill, you know, being announced online as you are the cast and those exciting moments that like we, we've learned to yearn for when it's it's difficult to – I feel like there hasn't been a lot of, like, representation of, like, what different types of success are. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and not even just, like, in terms of jobs, in terms of, like – I think a big thing of success is, like, is, like, learning to have a hobby that doesn't have to be put on as special skills. Like, I think mm-hmm. that's success because so much yeah. of us is, like, our identity – is so linked to our art that it's hard to like separate the two. Mm -hmm. You feel like, like I know I got to a moment last summer where it was kind of like my, (laughs) my like 
come to Jesus moment where like my <laughs> husband was just like, we, you need like, we, this is different. You need to take, a, you need to take a break, my girl. Like mm -hmm. I was just on this thing of like trying to like, please trying to please anyone that I wanted to see me. And I was just like, well, what if I, like, what if I learn ukulele and then I, it doesn't seem that hard maybe. And then I'll put it on my list, my special skills list. And my husband was just like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> what, like, what do you want to learn how to play ukulele for yourself? And I was like, not really. And he's like, so why, why would you do that? And I was like, uh, I don't know. And what I want to do anymore. And you know, that's when the waterfall mm -hmm. of tears came and trying to figure out what I'm doing with my life. But, um, yeah, it's like, there's just so much that is like fused together in this space that we forget that like success can come in every form mm -hmm. and that like truly like waking up is a success that yes. is enough because we are we are enough as we are and we don't need to prove ourselves to anyone and And that even the people who are like showing all this, all the success, like that we view as like commercial su success of the wins and the jobs and the money and the monetation and the events that they're going to and the nominations, which are all beautiful. But like those people have also been through their shit. Oh, I don't know. Can I curse here? Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> They've been through their shit too. And, um, and that, you know, that sometimes they want to share for the love of sharing. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's like, okay, for my business of, of me, I have to share this to show that, Hey, look, I'm doing something. Come and see it. Maybe you'll want me to be in your thing next kind of thing. And I get mm -hmm. that. And I respect that. And, but there is this need to remind ourselves that that's not what it's all about. And, um, and that we can have other interests outside of the art that we want to do and th that the art that we want to do maybe as our profession. And, um, you know, I think it's also a success to say to yourself, I, this doesn't make me happy anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's a really hard thing to say. And I've had to say that to myself and it's broken me or it's felt like it's broken me to be like, I don't know if this is what I want to do anymore. Same. I have one life to live and I feel like I'm living it for everybody else except those who are my closest loved ones. I'm living it for people that I don't, I don't even know who they are. I don't know who's even looking at it. I don't know who's mm -hmm. looking at the art that I'm putting my heart on the line for every time. Um, and So it, it, it just feels like, and I feel like this isn't probably in so many other, if not every other career under this like capitalist world we live in. It's just like success does not have to be monetizable. Like mm -hmm. success is like what, what makes us feel whole. And mm -hmm. it's hard to figure out what that success is because sometimes – Sometimes it's like you go to sleep and I'm like, I didn't have any success today. Nothing made me feel full. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm learning to find different success in different areas of my life. And hopefully when that kind of includes performance again, when that brings me back into the space as an active like performing member, not just like a viewer and a lover and um, a supporter of musical theater, um, I'm hoping that all of that – and I'm confident that all of that work that I've been doing on my inner life and my confidence and my spiritual life, like all of that is going to like make whatever difficulties that are in the theater space like just calmer, calmer, calmer waters and be able to like do the art that I want to do in a way that best showcases myself. Ooh. And I want – I really – I want that for everyone, honestly. Like – that's how everyone should be able to do their art because God, it's so hard to create and to remind yourself about how much you love the art when all you're doing is just like being a commodity for people. Mm -hmm. Like it's, that's hard too. like people who never stop working. There's so much gratitude in that, that I'm sure that they have, but like, God, it must be hard. God, it must right. be hard to not be able to take a, fucking break and to not like kind of look in the mirror and go oh 
I look exhausted. <laughs> like who is yeah. that in the mirror? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a shell. I'm a husk of a human. Yeah. Um, so it's, our industry is like, it needs, our industry needs to like slow down in the areas that it's going too fast and speed up in the areas it needs to speed up. <laughs> like Absolutely. in terms of progress, but. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you, you were studying theater in, in college. Um, mm -hmm. Post-college, uh, was there anything or what was the first thing you did like out of school, um, whether it was um, professional, semi-professional, or even just local or anything like that? What was, what was something that you did out of school? Um, I, I got really, I was really like lucky in that I made connections and did some so my college had a summer theater program that was yes. professional so that mm -hmm. that's really awesome i love it when schools give that opportunity to students and also like people in the surrounding area as well um and i worked with a company called enchantment theater company they're based out of philadelphia and mm -hmm. i did one of their children's productions at the school during one of their seasons and um I, th I think I auditioned for them or through that process, they were like, hey, we're doing our next touring production is Velveteen Rabbit. We'd love to have you audition for that. And I was like, great, cool. Why not? And um, so I did I, – I booked that, which was really cool. And then I was able to do like a tour, like their their next show. It was – I think we developed it. It was called – it was a rendition of – Scheherazade in the thousand in the thousand tales the thousand yeah my brain is fried on what that name was because they changed it so many times but um <laughs> but that was that was really that was a really nice transition for me it was nice to have something to see in front of me right after graduating because um I'm a person that is very um comfortable working and thriving within a routine um even though school is was always difficult and studying was always difficult like the routine of it all really helped me and those tours that i did were based off of children's like school systems so i was basically working as a professional during like the school year type thing so i kind of still had that structure of of um the school that i like the schooling that i'd done but like all of the work was able to like focus on the professional job I was doing. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was a hard gig too. Like that was not a princess job whatsoever. It was very, you know, it was, it was bus and truck tour. We put up mm -hmm. the set, we tore down the set. We um, mm. like, I was, I think my position, at least on the second tour, I don't remember the first one, but my position on the second tour was like, I was the one like, calling the how, how like everything was set up so i was like in charge of like interacting with the crews and being like hey like this is how it's set up please like follow these instructions or this is how the truck needs to get uh, repacked so that everything fits perfectly um i was the like the puzzle like i was the one like building the puzzle wow. and um which was good because it definitely helped me with my confidence in speaking to older people in the industry <laughs> that i think kind of there always kind of felt like there was this like gap between the performers and the crew. And I always thought that was like, well, that's crap. Like we, we work together to make this happen. Like I respect you for what you do. I would hope that you respect me as well. So I kind of like learned confidence in speaking to people who like <laughs> didn't see me as an equal mm -hmm. and learning how to just like what things needed to be addressed versus like what I could roll off my back. And so that was good in terms of like toughening me up in the industry and um and i learned that was like one aspect of not of learning to not take things too personally um and that that was good for me because i always thought in school especially like high school and stuff i was like when things were cast in a way that like really felt icky mm -hmm. i was just like you know and people would be like it's not personal it's business i'm like but it's not business this is an educational program mm -hmm. and like different people should be given opportunities to like thrive and see like what, what they can do. Like, even if I was cast a lot, like 
it still made me go, but there are other people here too. Like, why can't they get an opportunity to do this as well? And, and I just always thought, I was like, it just doesn't feel like this. It's like this as much. I just don't think it's like this as much in the professional world. Of course it is, but like, Mm -hmm. you're not as connected to it. You don't see those people every single day. Like you're not in class with those people. You're not best friends with those people all the time. Like Mm -hmm. it's such a confined community in like, in your educational like programs that like, (laughs) <laughs> at least when you go into the real world, like you can kind of separate yourself and go home. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, the, those, those gigs were good. Uh, by the time that the second one was done, my body was really like, Oh, we can't do this anymore. Like yeah, it was no. the, <laughs> the van life, like living in the van and, and driving in the truck. Like my body was pretty wrecked. Um, mm-hmm. That I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And, but I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about, just all the inner workings of how to product put a production together and um it's important yeah although i wish i you know got paid more for the work that we did <laughs> i i was super grateful for um like i look back on it now i'm like i'm really happy i did that because it toughened me up in a good way and like made me appreciate my part of the puzzle and mm-hmm. also like all the other parts of the puzzle that you don't have or if you don't have those parts of the puzzle like you don't have a show so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, and that's definitely traveled with me through every other like professional job and um and yeah i I love crew, I love like sound and and tech because I'm just like you got like and costumes, I'm like, thank you i i can't I couldn't do that long term, so thank you for doing it because I could only do it for two tours, and I'm dumb done, done. <laughs> yeah, that's it, okay, so you i mean just even looking at your your reel and looking at like what you've done i can already see and talking well of course talking to you right now i can already see that like you're pretty versatile in the skills that you know i mean thank you you like you worked on crew for a show for two tours i mean like yeah it's, it's two tours but that's like not too many people can say that um it aged me <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I saw a lot, um, but <laughs> but I guess we can jump into um, so the thing I'm familiar with you like first time I was introduced to you was um, Wizard of Friendship with Lou Berger, um, which kudos to you as well and kudos Thank to them you. and that was incredible. Like, were you how... able to see the show or did you? Were you like, were you able to come to a show or? I wasn't, a, I was not able to come to a show. Um, I followed the process pretty closely. Oh, um, cool. When I found out it was happening because I am also a, a fan of uh, Lou Berger and what they do. And of course, you know, Keith as well. Um, I was following, I was just really interested in it because it was something that like, was spoken about a lot, like the the process from yeah. their perspective of things and just the idea of like putting a show together, um, you know, was so fascinating to me. So, and I, what I liked is that they put a lot of emphasis on the people involved as well, um, and gave you guys a platform. So I, I wanted to talk a little For bit sure. more. How did uh, you get involved with that show? What was that process like getting involved with it? I, so I, I had an agent at the time. Um, I won't speak of him, but um, (laughs) not with him any longer for reasons. But uh, at the time I did have an agent, but I didn't come through him. I was just scrolling on Instagram and I think I just saw their, their casting notice on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And there was something in my gut that just said, cause I, I do this thing on Instagram that I don't know. I hope other people do it too, because I can't be the only one where I'll just save posts a bunch of times. And I'm like, Oh, I'm totally going to like, look at that. Or I'm going to do that recipe or I'm going to blah, 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 blah. And then I completely forget about it. And um, there was (laughs) something about that one that I was just like, no, I need to apply to this right now. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's like the, the form isn't that difficult. Like I can finish this task right now. Um, like executive function be damned. I will do it right now. And, um, I, and I think I was, it was, I was pretty, 
I had all my, my materials together at that point. Like, I think it was like submit a reel, do all like your like socials and all of that. And it was a pretty easy form to fill out just for that initial process. And um, so I just did it and I was like, okay, at least I did it. Like, why not? Um, mm -hmm. I have these moments of boldness where I'll like email someone and be like, hi, I want to work with you. Or, <laughs> um, you know, I'll just like have these these uh, bats of like, I just call it like the be bold, my be bold gene, or I can do anything gene where, um, and I think what, that was one of those days and I did it and I just didn't think about it, which um, I feel like at that point I just sent in like so many other like self tapes that I was just like, no, I should just send this one in. And, um, and I, I think a couple days later, I got an email about like, hey, would you like, thank you so much. Would you film, um, you know, film the scene? And it was a scene with the wizard. It was when we first meet the wizard. And um, when the wizard comes, comes to the boys, which Loop River boys, I love them so much. Um, when they're fighting because they're all like so unhappy with each other and they're different quirks that they all find annoying to each other. And then the Wizard of Friendship comes on stage and it's just like, you've broken my heart because you guys can't get along. So I'm going to banish you into no friendia um, because you got to learn to get your shit together and be friends mm. or you're there stuck for eternity. Right. And um, I, I have, <laughs> I have this thing about me with auditions that like I'm, after having to do like so many self tapes during the pandemic, the height of the pandemic, I just started to like, I cared. I always cared because I, I want my product to look good and I want my representation of like the work that I send out to be good. But like, I've just become more and more unhinged in my auditions because I'm like, who fucking cares anymore? Like, <laughs> I was just like, I. <laughs> if I'm not going to like grab someone's attention with this wild script by being like authentically unhinged, because I kind of am unhinged as a human being, like anyway, like let's just fucking go for it and have some fun because I'm so tired of doing a boring rendition of something when just to try to please someone that might not even watch it. So I just went full, full on, like unhinged. I, <laughs> I, the scene I just like I put on a couple of different voices um I I had like a onesie or not a onesie like one of those like hoodies that like was just because I was like I want to look like a I want to like have a wizard moment so I just put on a big hoodie that had like a gigantic hood and um I had a staff because my husband just has a wizard staff that he got from the woods. So it literally looks like Gandalf staff from Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I just went for it. And I was just unhinged. And, um, you know, it, <laughs> and I sent it in and I was just like, fuck it. <laughs> like the, the <laughs> hardest part about that was like the dance portion. I was just like, okay, like the only thing I don't feel amazing about is the dance bit, but you know, I'm going to do the best that I can. Um, and we'll, we'll see, we'll see if I get anything or if I hear anything. And again, it was like, you know, I got to a point in that audition time where I'd be like only doing so many takes. And I'm like, I'm not going to do any more takes because this is the best I have. I will choose from what I have. And then we're just going to move on with our life. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I don't get very like, Maybe it's because I did YouTube for a long time that, like, I don't get that um, – or I, I didn't get that critical about, like, the the self-tape of it all. Like, self-tapes were kind of comforting because I was like, oh, I don't have to, like I, – I can edit this to make it look how I want. Like, I can choose my take. I can choose my best moment. And then – I have more control in this situation than in a live audition when my nerves might be getting the best of me. And – um so I did that and, and I was able to just like send it in and just be happy that I did the work. And I was like, all right, cool. That was fun. I had a good time doing it. And then I think it, that was like near the end of the year. And I, right after like 
New Year's, I was going into the city. I think I had a doctor's appointment. I was like doing like a big adult day of like, I'm going to go to the doctors because I have insurance now. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and like, um, and I like had this like lucky moment of a friend selling her Leducas and I was at a price. I was just like, are you kidding? And she was like, I don't need them. And I was just like, I'll take them. And so I like met up with her and like got this pair of Leducas that like, I'm like, I'm like oh my God, I'm such a musical theater girly right now. And, um, and then I just got this call that said like LA and immediately I was like, is that a scam? And then I was like, I was like, wait, LA. I was like, the Lou Berger team is, they're LA based. And so I just like, I answered the phone and it was Alex on the phone mm -hmm. and dear, dear Alex. He's so sweet. And um, I, I don't remember much of it because I felt like I, my heart was like in my ears. Cause I was like, is this the, is this the call right now? Is this the fucking call? And I'm in, I'm on like 50th street, like in time, pretty much in Times square. Like what am I doing? <laughs> and, um, and I, and at this time the guy's like sign was already up, like at the theater, like it was like there already. And, mm -hmm. um, and Alex was like, Hey, like we really, we really, really loved like your tape. It, it was so funny. Like we really, really loved it. We'd love to, um, we'd love to have a talk with you on zoom in a couple of days. And I was just like, okay. And I realized a couple of days later, or I realized like maybe the next day I was like, oh, this is the callback because they sent me material. But like, I was just, cause I hadn't heard like, Mm -hmm. the, the phrase of like, we'd love to chat with you. And I was like, is this the call? Did I just, did I just book? And mm -hmm. it just felt so different. It felt so um, aligned and it felt light and it didn't feel heavy. And it was just like, it felt easy. And I was so not used to anything in this space feeling easy. <laughs> and there's just something about it that I was just like, no matter what happens, like, I did fucking good. Like I did good because I got to this point and I did it a hundred percent as me. Like this is, this is such a win. This is success. And then I did um, what was a callback and I basically met all of the guys. I think I met all of the team over zoom. So basically the entire creative team was on the zoom. Um, and and yeah, it was it, it was like a lovely callback. We did the material and then we just chatted and they asked me things just about myself. And and then I didn't hear anything for like a like maybe a week or two. And I thought, OK, they probably went with someone else. I'm thinking my dance. It was probably my dance stuff. Like, OK, like I feel really good. And and I had learned that like. A lot of friends that like. um had heard that like I had auditioned they were just like oh my god like I it was very cool it was very like 27 dresses moment where like people were just like hey like I heard that like Emily auditioned for this like she's a really cool person or mm -hmm. she's great to work with I love working with her or um she's she's kind like you won't have to worry about her or she's mama bear like she'll take care of the ensemble that um that are in there if you choose her and I think people rooting for me that I didn't even know were rooting for me um, that I kind of hadn't even clocked because I was so in my own fucking head about like what I was doing that um, I think that definitely helped. And then I, right before, like I, like pr pretty much like a week and a half after that, I got the call and it was, it was by the producer that I hadn't really met. So I was just like, who's this, who's this gentleman? Um, <laughs> I was like, who's this man calling me? Um, but it was, it was very cool. It was a very exciting moment. Um, I was by myself with my dog um, and because my husband was on tour at the time with Moulin Rouge. So like I, I called him and I like FaceTimed him and like screen recorded it. And I was just like, yeah, I think I'm going to have to cut my my or I'm going to have to change my flight uh, from when I see you next week. And he was like, he's like, why? And I was like, because I booked the show and we start rehearsal soon. And so it was really it was a it was a lovely moment. I was. I'm so happy that I like have it on tape so I can be like, Oh, that was really fucking cool. Um, so yeah, it's, I have this thing with my process that I've learned, which is extremely frustrating, but also magical sometimes that, uh, happened with Lou Berger. It's like either I, <laughs> either I don't hear anything or I book. And so like, there is no, 
way to like categorize <laughs> what <laughs> I do or, or how I've impressed or how I've made a difference. Um, so I'm, what I'm gauging from that is that like the only thing I can do is just be myself mm -hmm. and do whatever myself is in that moment because either it's going to completely resonate or it's not. And that's no business of mine. That's not my part of the process. That's their job to right. cast and to create, um, to create a team that works cohesively and and that's <laughs> it's so frustrating because I'm just like uh, I don't know <laughs> what is my <laughs> life, but then at the same time it feels really good when I do book it. Then I'm like yeah because I was a hundred percent myself and I did it the way that spoke to me and I had people rooting for me that I didn't know were rooting for me. And that was, that was probably the coolest part is that like, wow, people. And I think this goes for a lot of people. Like people are rooting for you when you don't even realize that they are. Yeah. Um, Cause you do, you get so caught up in your own stuff, understandably. And, um, but there are people on the outside, like just excited to root for you no matter what you're excited about okay yeah yeah honestly that's a beautiful story that is a beautiful yeah, story it's a good one. yeah just like going from you know everything in your past that you told me up to this point like this is, yeah it's it is fully fleshed out and now we're going to make a musical about your life and <laughs> we're going to <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to make millions uh, <laughs> just like yeah. unhinged character <laughs> unhinged character i mean that's what it's called that's the title working title unhinged <gasps> character i love it yep yeah, there we go i mean in just you know just for a statement right that you you audition a lot yeah just you audition a lot yeah i've taken a bit of a break um this year but i've done quite a bit of auditioning in the past mm. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, I just like quite to, I like to bring that in to you know, and ask the guest about that because, um, you know, so many people think you know you audition get audition get you know because they they mm. see the get they don't see that you don't get. Uh, <laughs> so sometimes you just don't get you know you audition or you don't even get in the room. <laughs> right, 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 and especially since pandemic, yeah. since everything is self taped for the most part, yeah. you know, self tape callback and then whatever ropes they want to like make you jump over, you know, after that, you know, it's really yep. nice to, to hear that, you know, cause this is a really nice success, you know, this is a really nice success. And um, obviously it, it helped me find you find out who you were just for the simple fact that like Luberger likes, you know, really did like to talk about their process in this so much um, that we got to know a lot of you guys and everyone who's involved with the, yeah. with the show. It was really, they they made us feel they really did a great job of making us feel like we weren't an accessory to the show that we mm -hmm. were truly part of the team and part of the process and um i mean i don't want to claim this because i don't know if it's true but like i was the i was the oldest amongst uh the ensemble um <laughs> by quite a few years and um i I did kind of feel like there were a lot of moments and where, and maybe it was just through like looks and exchanges where like, I kind of felt like the guys looked to me to just be like, is this how it's done? And I'm like, you guys, you're doing great. You're doing great. Like, yeah, go for it. Like, and that just made me feel like, obviously I didn't make me feel like I had any authority, but it just kind of made me feel like I was like, oh, they trust me. They trust that like, maybe I don't have Broadway credits Mm -hmm. But like that I've been here long enough that like, if anything, in like the grassroots part of it of like the the trenches that it's like, um, that, you know, and, and th that like, I don't know, maybe that like, I just like I knew what I was talking about. And I knew that mm -hmm. um, kind of what was like worth worrying about or or kind of obviously this is just my perception but it, it did feel like sometimes that they would be like oh yeah like no we're good if and I was just like oh, yeah, you're you're fine like stuff <laughs> like that and I don't know that may have just been me in my magical thinking but um 
I did feel like there was this level of we are a team putting this together. We might be like headlining it and we might be the face of it and the thing that people are like wanting to see, but like all of us creating creating this together is why it's going to be special and why it's going to be the show that it is. And that was, it was a very cool process because it felt like I was like, ah, it can be done. It can mm-hmm. be done where like you're, your actors are treated with respect that your actors are don't feel like they're going to be punished if they're late because the trains are late. Like I would be like, I was the only one coming in from like regional areas, like in New Jersey. And then some trains are just horrible. And I was like, Mm -hmm. Hey guys, like I, I kind of need to leave now or I won't be able to get home tonight until like a crazy hour. And they're like, Oh my God, go just go. You can go like Mm -hmm. get home to your dog. And I was just like, are you sure? And they're like, Emily, go home to your dog. And I was like, Oh, okay. Like, it was just like, wow, we can treat each other like humans. Like it's possible. And it was kind of nice to have, you know, a lot of them had had experiences in theater. Like Alex had, had been working and doing it. And like Huey had been working in the uh, music space in the music industry. So getting like bits of it from there. And, and Keith had grown up as a musician with his dad, but also did musical theater growing up, I believe. And so, but they were so like also not connected to it as well. Mm -hmm. Like they were in this, in the, in the YouTube space of really like being your own boss, creating your own schedule, like um, creating your own art, creating your own thing that like you don't have to follow the rules that maybe like an institution has set up because YouTube was, is still the wild, wild west. And yep. so, um, so it was like, they, they understood those things. They understood like, there was no like barrier to entry on, 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 on your human needs. And that was really nice. And, um, it just made me feel like, oh, it's, it's possible. We just need more people who are like willing to learn. We need more people who are willing to like understand that different people have different needs and um and sensitivities and and it just takes a little bit extra patience it just takes a little bit of extra time and they were willing to do that even though we were on under a really tight time schedule like Huey was really great with like music and making people feel confident in in the musical lines that they were singing and if they didn't if it didn't feel right it was like, okay, well then how, do, how do we change it to like really showcase you? How do we, do we change the key? Do we create new runs? Do we bring in more backing vocals to support you? Like, what do you need? And it was just, I was like, ah, oh. like I just kind of, there's so many times where like I was able to just sit back in awe and just be like, this is how, this is how you do it. Like, this is how you support each other like that's how this is how a creative team can support their actors because then it makes us it made us really want to like make them proud it made us really Mm want to work and like make those moments really really funny and like really like hype them up so that their core um fans who had sold us out that they would feel like Oh, I'm seeing a, I'm seeing something completely different than Lou Berger's ever done. Like it made us want to do that for them. It made us want to like support them and everything um, that was happening on the stage. And um, yeah, I was like, it, it was just really nice to experience it be possible. And I think that that's happening in more bigger productions too, from things that I hear, but um you know, it's, it's going to take time, but I think we're on our way of making our, our theatrical space feel safer and, and better. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I have a segment for you. Okay. I have a segment for you. Um, this is going to be kind of a lightning round. Okay. okay. Stress. <laughs> kind, I got it. Kind of I got it, Darius. Round. I can do this. <laughs> you know, um, quicker answers if there isn't really an answer then it's really just to see like how quick it is you know and i have this out you know it's for specific guests but i feel like you can handle it i feel like you can (laughs) okay (laughs) (laughs) i feel like you can go into it so i'm just gonna answer these questions okay and lightning round beginning now vocal range 
soprano rock belter. Okay. Dream role? There isn't one. Okay. Favorite role you've played? Mm, Olive in, um, oh, oh my God, what's the show called? Spelling Bee. <laughs> Favorite show? Susan called the musical. God nice. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite theater song? Right now, it's My Days, The Notebook. Mm. Oh, excellent show. Come on, Joy Woods. Come on. <laughs> uh, do you have a go to audition song? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> which it's one of them which one of the merry murderers is do you identify with uh pop six squish uh cicero or lipschitz cicero let's go <laughs> okay if you can have dinner with any musical theater performer alive or dead who would it be oh That's a hard one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, Liza Minnelli. Ooh, yes. Okay. And uh, if you could bring a show back for a revival, which one would it be? Oh, Sue's called the musical. I'd have so many changes because there are problematic things in that show, but I've, my, me and my friends, we've thought of so many ideas of making it kick ass. <laughs> Amazing. And last but not least, if someone wanted to be a fan of Emily Martinez, where could they find you? They could find me um my little my little corner of the internet uh, at Emily Martinez official on Instagram, and then I still have my YouTube channel up, although she's not that active anymore. Um, on Emily Martinez Entertainer YouTube YouTube dot com slash Emily Martinez Entertainer. Amazing, Emily. This was amazing. This was so fun. Thank you. <laughs> this was so fun. I was like nervous, but then I'm like, wait, I'm talking to I'm talking to a cool person about musical theater. So like, let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's all it really is. That's all it really is. And I wanted to shine the light on that because I, I found I just found it interesting. Yeah. Thank you. And... Thank you so much for reaching out and including me. And I'm excited to hear the episode when it comes back. Yeah, comes absolutely. Out. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably have you back in in some certain times. I'd love to. I'd love to come back. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. And we're going to sign out here, and we are out.